So that is the end of our cosmology course, Paul, and the end, the last segment of our 37 lecture series, which we represents first year astrophysics here at ANU. It's been a long, but hopefully rewarding slog. Yes, now some of you will have been through, with us all the way through this whole series of four courses, in which case, congratulations. Some of you will have just jumped into this cosmology course, in which case, remember, you can go back and do the other courses. Uh, every one of the courses in this series is reopened as a self-paced course once it finishes running. And we will also run them as properly paced courses in an endless cycle going forward. So feel free to go back and do the rest if you wish. Now, Brian. Let's say one of our students is so enthused by the courses that they want to learn more. Where do you go from now? Well, you know, I think there's a number of ways forward. If you haven't done the other three courses, they're a great place to start. But if you're going to move on, you're really going to need some more physics, probably, and some more mathematics. And fortunately, there are a number of other MOOCs out there uh, for you to learn this. And so I really think that's probably stop number one. Yes, there are some more advanced astronomy MOOCs, not a great number, but there are a few, and the number is increasing all the time. But you will probably need a stronger maths and physics background to cover them, so it might be a better place to start would be some more maths and physics courses. But if you're wanting something a little less formal, the world is full of uh, blogs out there done by contemporary astronomers talking about the contemporary issues right now within uh, astronomy. And so most of those are written at a level where, given what you've learned in this course, you should be able to understand. Yes, you might even be able to understand some of the actual research papers. Some of them will still be a bit complicated, but by now, if you've done the whole series of courses, you should have most of the terminology to understand at least a bit of most of these things. So that's a good place to, to work as well. Of course, some of you may want to go on and do more formal study, and ultimately that's probably going to require uh, going to university at some point. The, I don't think the MOOCs are quite ready to uh, provide a formal network at this point, although it may happen in the not too distant future. And so astronomers really have degrees uh, that involve astronomy, physics, and mathematics. Yes, you don't even need to do astronomy particularly. It's a really strong background in maths and physics is the most crucial thing to get in your degree. And then if you want to become a professional astronomer, your career path must be to get a PhD at that point in astronomy, preferably one of the good universities around the, around the world, such as here at ANU. And once you've got that, you can be in the market for an actual professional job and a career in the whole field. Yeah, and I wouldn't be scared about uh, becoming an astronomer if it's what you're dreaming about. Uh, there are, it's a very competitive to actually get a research job like Paul and I have in astronomy. But on the other hand, the number of people who are unemployed who get these PhDs are very small. That it's a, it's a thing that allows you to do almost anything. And most people find getting, for example, the PhD and doing the research that uh, comes in getting this PhD in astrophysics very rewarding along the way. So we wish. I'd like to wish you good luck in your future studies, wherever you may go. It's been a great pleasure getting to know you all through the discussion forums in this course.